Good morning. Hope you're having a great Thursday and thanks for giving me five to seven minutes. As we continue looking at the life of Joseph, we've been walking through from Genesis 37 and this morning we're going to be in Genesis 43. So once you get your copy of God's Word and we're going to, again, I'm going to tell you about what you're going to read and then my hope is that you will go and be able to read some of God's Word throughout the day. All right, so we're in Genesis 43 this morning. As you roll into Genesis 43, have you ever been invited into someone's home and then them not asking you to have a seat or them not offering you a cup of coffee or a glass of water or a refreshment? Have you ever had that happen and it's kind of that awkward, uh, I don't know what to do and I don't really feel welcomed and I, and I just don't know what to do. Have you ever had that awkward time? Well, that's where the life of Joseph is this morning, as the brothers have to go back to Egypt. But they're not going to have that awkwardness. They're going to have much hospitality given to them. So by now, you should be in Genesis chapter 43. Let's see what's going on. Well, first of all, the famine, it hasn't let up. And as a matter of fact, it's gotten worse. Remember from previous chapters 42, uh, that it's going to last seven years. We're somewhere in the seven years of the famine. I would think we're on the, the further end of the seven years because desperate times are really happening. And the boys, they've come back from Egypt the first time that they have to return to buy more food. And this is not what they want to do. Jacob doesn't want them to go back. They don't want to go back because Jacob doesn't want to give Benjamin. And they said, we can't return without Benjamin. And Jacob says it's not happening, but we have this desperation time. Now, Judah steps up and he's pledging Benjamin's safety. And he says, you know what? We can't sit here and wait around. We need to stop dragging our feet. If we would have just made this decision, we could have been there and back at least two times. And they're just, you see the boys stepping up and saying, I'll do this, but we've got to do it. We've got to do it because our family is suffering. Your grandkids are suffering, Jacob. My kids are suffering. Let's make this decision and then let's do it. Well, verse 14, Jacob comes to grips that God is truly in control. He prays that God would show mercy, but what is going to happen is going to happen. He's saying, dear God, please have mercy. I've lost Joseph. Simeon's still in prison. I got to send Benjamin. If I don't, my family's going to die. If I do, my family could die. And in verse 14, I see the turn in this chapter, Jacob going, God, you've got to step in. Ultimately, it's your will and not my will. So Jacob says, if you've got to go and you do have to go, I want you to take double the gifts, double the money for the man in charge of the food in Egypt. Well, you and I both know that that's Jacob, but they don't know that it's, I'm sorry, that it's Joseph, but they don't know that it's Joseph, especially Jacob. He thinks Joseph is, is long gone. So they end up back in Egypt. I, I, just imagine the, the trip. And what could have been said, what conversations could have happened and the fear, the anxiety, the anticipation. I hope that this goes well. And you better believe they watched Benjamin like a hawk because that's their father's pride and possession. Uh, his, the son that he loves the most. So they take the gifts and they take the double money and they go back to Egypt and they all sit down to a brotherly dinner. So they come back. Hey, we brought this back. We brought the money back. We're sorry. We didn't steal it. Joseph says, I know you didn't steal it. Let's sit down for supper. And don't, don't breeze over that. This is a great example of hospitality, of inviting people in. Now, this isn't Joseph's best friends here. These are the very guys that locked him in prison or that sold him into slavery that eventually got him locked into prison. These aren't Joseph's best friends. These are his... <laughs> not to be dramatic, his mortal enemies, the guys that caused him the deepest hurt and the deepest harm. And yet he's sitting here saying, come on in. And you can see the, the thread of forgiveness. You can see the beginnings of reconciliation. You can see the repairing that's happening. And again, we can look ahead to Genesis 50, 20. What man meant for evil, God has meant for good. And Joseph doesn't slam the door on his brothers and say, how does it feel? He brings them in and he feeds them. Why is that important? Because they're hungry. Today, on the recording on the 11th, it is miserably cold. 
how unhospitable it would be for me to have a meeting and make you stand outside, especially in the cold. Joseph brings them in and he feeds them. They all sit down to this dinner. And again, in verse 28, notice what they do. They bow to Joseph. Another instance of Genesis 37 happening that the brothers will bow to Joseph. Now, Joseph sits them in order, and this kind of takes the guys by curiosity going, hey, this guy knows our birth order. It's their brother, but they don't know that. So Joseph sees Benjamin, his long lost brother, his full brother. Uh, my translation says the brother from his mother in verse 29, and he is overcome with emotion. And so he leaves the room, he, he composes himself, he comes back in, and as they sit down, he sits him in that birth order, and then he gives Benjamin five times as much as the others. Five times as much food as the others, because that's his true uh, brother, his full line brother. So what what application can we take? I want us to really focus on the hospitality of Joseph towards his brothers. It could have been easy to be angry and to stay angry and even to have revenge, to lock them all in jail, to, to cause them harm, to treat them the way that they treated him. But no, what we see from Joseph is we see kindness and we see hospi hospitality shown to his, his brothers that were his enemies, the guys that, that started him on this journey. And we see Joseph reaching out in hospitality. So the question I have for you is, who could you show hospitality and kindness to this week? When you sit down and you, you have that time with them, that's when you share life. That's when you can share uh, things going on, struggles, uh, encouragement, prayer requests, things that are going on. And that's one thing that I've missed and we've all missed during this pandemic is coming into each other's home and to share life. God did not create us to live in isolation, but in relationships. So who could you show hospitality to and kindness to this week? Now, some of you are saying, hey, I'm just not ready for that. I understand that. I understand that there's some hesitancy, but what are some creative ways at which you could do this? You're watching me on a the computer. There's a phone call. There's distance visiting. There's many creative ways in which to show hospitality. Some people would just love a phone call or a card or a text just to let them know that you're thinking of them. What are some creative ways that you can show hospitality and kindness during a pandemic. What a great challenge from Joseph on this Thursday morning. Well, I want to invite you to our church on Sunday morning. If you don't have a church that you are going to, we're walking through the life of Daniel. We're in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. We'll be finishing that up this week in Daniel chapter 3. So if you don't have a place that you call home for church, love to see you in person, 9 o'clock and 10.30. And then if you aren't ready to come to our building and want to join, a, join us digitally on our digital campus and engage with us there, we'll be streaming our service somewhere around 930. And I'd love to invite you to that. And if you do have a church, I hope you have a great weekend of worship. We'll be back here on Monday morning for Genesis 43 as we continue with the story of Joseph now that his brothers are in Egypt. Hope you have a great couple days. And if you need anything or want to talk, reach out. Love to engage with you. Have a great couple days. I'll see you soon.